one of the founding bedrocks of our country, the strongest foundation of this greatest country that ever, ever existed, the United States of America, was that you were innocent until proven guilty. Once you take that away from us, then the people will lose all faith in government. I believe that we have already lost quite a bit of faith in the government. Some people have lost 100% faith in a government that does not listen to us. There have been murder suspects. There have been people who have been suspected of murder, but they have been let out on bail. And yet, here we are in Pahrump, Nevada. We are at Camp Liberty. It is a protest site outside of a private, for-profit prison where Ammon Bundy was tortured for 13 hours. Now, many things have come to light in this protest. We have found out that they literally bus up the prisoners and they keep them in buses for hours and hours and they drive them to the airport where the airport uh, where the airplane does not go off and they drive them back to the prison and they are literally transporting these prisoners from place to place like cattle this is a billion dollar industry and Americans are not aware of this situation and you would think that if these private corporations are making money off the prisoners that they would not torture them you would think that would be the case but apparently they have security guards in there they are not regular law enforcement officers they only are allowed to be on that property as security guards they're just workers hired by a corporation to torture prisoners. It's a shame. And when you talk about Judge Navarro, Judge Navarro was the judge in the latest trial where she did not even want the Constitution in her courtroom. That's what really bothers me the most. How is it that these federal judges can keep the Constitution out of their courtroom? We have gone down America has fallen, and we have fallen hard. I am optimistic that we are going to get back up. Americans are tough, and even though they have knocked us down hard, I mean, we hit the ground hard, I believe Americans are tough enough and strong enough to get back off the ground, dust ourselves off, and say, enough is enough. That's why we are here at Camp Liberty. We are going to be talking to a man named John Lamb. He has come all the way from Montana to expose these private, for-profit prisons. Like John, everybody was alarmed that Emmon Bundy was tortured. Again, we are innocent until proven guilty. And that's probably the worst part of this travesty travesty on justice, that these men are innocent until proven guilty, but yet they sit in this prison and the corporations are making money off of them. That's the reason why there is no bail. That's the reason why all these patriots cannot get bail, because the private prisons make money off of them. Is this evil? It's beyond sinister. What has America become? where our justice system has been handed over to a corporation to make money off of us like cattle. We, we are being harvested like animals. And enough is enough. So here we are at Camp Liberty. Let's talk to John and see what's up. So, John, have you heard about the prison officials inside? Yes, I, I finally what I did is I had to call CCA, which is now Core Civics. They've changed their name in the last uh, couple of weeks or so. And um, I called the headquarters out of Tennessee, and I did a recording of their phone call just so I could just keep it just for my own records mainly. But I called them, did some complaints, saying we're not getting any information back from these people, and we want to know what's going on, and we have some complaints and concerns. And uh, 
they did call me back from this place right here because their headquarters told them to. And we had a long talk, a good talk, about quite a few issues and things that were going on. And even if we had disagreements, we still talked. And, um, and they, took, they said they were going to address the torture and the abuse? They were going to address these issues, check into it more. Um, we was also complaining about their security harassing us out here. They stopped that totally. The security no longer harasses us. How were they doing that before? What were uh, they? they would come down here and just park, like a car would park on the highway, uh -huh. and just count us, uh, look at us, even at midnight. Intimidation? And intimidation. Um, scared quite a few people by the way they would do it. They shine flashlights on us. And this is this is private. private this is property. private property, and they're shining flashlights on you on private property. Yes. That's illegal. It is. Oh, it's, it's intimidation. We actually talked to the sheriff about it too. We found out that they're private security. They're not a they're not a sworn in officer, so they don't have permission to go off a of private property, a corporation property. Too. apologize for the wind the quality of the video was very very poor because the winds were whipping at close to probably 50 miles per hour it was a brutal high desert windy day and uh, but we got a little bit of that interview and I will uh, if you didn't catch part of it uh, the most important part of that interview was where these protesters are camped out there. They've been camped out there. This is day 20. This is day 20 of the protest. And the uh, security guards, that's all they are, security guards on the prison. They would come out there at nighttime when these protesters were sleeping in their tents, in their camps, and these wannabe cops, remember, they're not law enforcement officers. They are not sworn in law, law enforcement officers. They're security guards. They would come out there and shine their lights into their faces on private property. They're not even allowed to be out there. These, and, and anyhow, that's what John was trying to say. The wind sort of distorted the interview quite a bit. And uh, John called the corporate office in Tennessee, and of course they got that taken care of, because if they didn't, this is illegal. Now, I don't know if law enforcement is going to ever do anything to these people. You see, that's the problem. These federal prisons are backed up by the federal government, their corporations, and as you know, our government is now in bed with the corporations. That is fascism. There is a very strange, weird thing happening in America. It's, it's an American fascism, where the governments are in bed with the corporations, but then you have a welfare state that acts like socialism, so it's, one of, it's a one-of-a-kind monster. That's what's happened to America. We have turned into a monster. And the name of that monster is fascism and socialism tied together. And now you are no longer innocent until proven guilty. Ammon, Bundy, and all the patriots are now, apparently, the government thinks that they are guilty until proven innocent. This is tyranny. This is tyranny, and that's why there's a protest here. That's why this Camp Liberty exists. This is day 20 of Camp Liberty. And also, it looks like they're going to be shutting, it's possible they'll be shutting down Camp Liberty on Monday. They have a big event planned for Saturday. So the update is that Saturday, this coming Saturday, they plan on a big, big event, a big, big po protest. As many people can show up as possible for a protest on Saturday, and then possibly on Monday, they're going to be shutting down Camp Liberty. There has been some progress. Things did get done. Now, if they continue to torture our patriots, then you can imagine that the protest would only get bigger and bigger and possibly these corporations could lose their contracts. So if I was the corporation, if I was running a for-profit prison, I think I would leave our patriots alone because they could lose billions and billions of dollars. That is a fact.
never forget these people. And we want to be able to come back here again if we need it, if we're needed, and set back up here again on this same place. So um, but we think at this time it might be time to move on, possibly on Monday. You can still send mail here. Camp Liberty, uh, 1776. Places set up uh, around not just here we're also going to set one of these jail cells downtown we're trying to set another information tent up down the street down here we need volunteers to help out with some of this stuff and um, so if anybody's willing to do that is going to be here we welcome your help and we'll uh, give as much information and um, out as we can before we do shut down over here well, I suppose you've heard enough wind turbulence for one day, but unfortunately, I think it's important, even though with the wind turbulence, I believe that this message is important, so we'll try to get it out there. This was day 20 of the protest, and yes, I know that I should probably buy a better camera, better audio equipment, but unfortunately, I do this all on my dime and I'm not a millionaire. That's what kind of troubles me with the patriot movement, the so-called conservative movement, patriots. We know that there's many out there that are well off, have millions of dollars in the bank. They claim that they love their country. They claim that they don't like the direction the country's going. They got a million dollars in the bank, but will they help out patriots who are on the ground out there trying to report the truth? No. You never have millionaires reaching out saying, hey, you're doing a good job. Let me buy you a new camera or something like that. No, the millionaires are selfish. Or, oh, I don't like the tone of your voice. I don't like the way you look. I don't like this or I don't like that. That's just the way the movement is. That's why, even though I'm optimistic that the American people are tough and the American people or persevere, I'm not very optimistic about the rich people. Matter of fact, I'm very pessimistic about all rich people, even the ones who call themselves so-called patriots, so-called conservatives. They keep their money in the bank, and they don't help out the real people on the ground trying to get something done. I'm just doing the best I can here. Thank you very much.